Gus won a jackpot playing the pokies. Problem is, the pensioner's banned from gambling because of his chronic addiction. But that didn't stop Gus's local club from taking his cash. When he won, though, the club wouldn't pay up. You had a jackpot. You won almost $11,000. Yes, I won $11,000. My initial reaction was, um, look, uh, he should not get the money. It seems to me that uh, the venue has profited from Gus. They should cough up the money. But they won't. When Gus Vega won big at this club on Queensland's Gold Coast, he was identified as being on a national register for problem gamblers, and the club wouldn't hand over his winnings, even though Gus claims the club let him gamble here for two months before he hit the jackpot. He shouldn't have gambled the money in the first place, and the club shouldn't keep the money he's gambled. Caesar Vega is Gus's long-suffering son. Look, if he gets the money, he will continue gambling, OK? It's a nightmare for you. It is a nightmare. It's a nightmare. But the club needs to do more to keep him out. They've preyed on Gus for months. They should cough it up. Independent Federal MP Andrew Wilkie has been calling for stricter controls on gambling. There is an argument to be made that it shouldn't go to Gus personally. Again, I'll leave it to others to decide, but uh, in, in, no matter where the money goes, it should not be retained by the club. So, Gus, for how long have you been gambling? I am gambling since, I think, more than 30 years. Colombian-born immigrant Gus was an aircraft mechanic who tells me he worked two jobs on occasions to fund his addiction. While he was earning income, he could sort of hide it away a little, a little. But then when he became a pensioner, the money was a lot tighter. And he blew his super? He burnt through his superannuation, what he had. Um, I don't know how much he had, but it would have been a few hundred thousand dollars. Caesar Vega says his dad's addiction cost him his marriage and Gus took drastic action. In the mine line in China, there is no gambling. So I went there. That's right, Gus moved to China, but says for health reasons had to return. And when he did, he put himself on the National Self-Exclusion Register for Gamblers, which means clubs with pokies are not supposed to let him in. But clearly the Southport Workers Club did. And I don't blame Gus for that. I blame the club for not effectively implementing um, what they're at least morally and probably legally required to do to, to in fact, keep people out who want to be kept out. I just feel like the system's not working, the self-exclusion system's not working. Caesar says the club has a photo of Gus which they're supposed to use to identify him. But club management told Caesar they couldn't recognise him from that photo. But all the other clubs have a very similar photo, if not the same photo, and they were able to identify him. And mostly, does it work? Do the clubs stop you and won't let you the, the clubs have stopped me all the time. It was working. But for some reason, it didn't work here. The club's payout refusal report saying patron is self-excluded and once identified was refused payout. So clearly they were happy to take your money when you were there, but they just weren't happy to pay out when you won a prize. Yeah, that, that was uh, my thinking. If indeed Gus had been going in time and time again for months, then that doesn't look like uh, some little slip up by the venue but more of a habitual or systemic problem at that place. In a statement, the CSI club says, the club is prevented by law from making any payment of winnings to a patron who's subject to a self-exclusion order. It's too hard for the clubs. They're busy. It needs to be automated. It needs to be built into the machines that they actually see the, you know, the metrics of a face and, and, and determine that person cannot play. In this case, I think action should be taken by the regulator against this club. But more broadly, right around the country in all the jurisdictions, we need to be putting in place systems to make self-exclusion arrangements work. The Queensland Office of Liquor and Gaming Regulation tell us they're investigating the matter and that if a club doesn't take reasonable steps to prevent someone who's put themselves on the register from gambling, then they can face a penalty of more than $33,000. I don't want the money. I want, I want the club fined. I want uh, better technology to stop this happening. The money should be donated 
to a cause that will help him and help others like him. To make matters worse, Caesar has just found out his dad borrowed the money he gambled at the club and has no way of paying it back. He needs the money to pay off his debts and... So this is heartbreaking. It is, very much so. It's hard that, isn't it? And the club's also told us it's up to the regulator to decide what happens to Gus's winnings. But as his son Caesar said, there's an easy answer, give it to charity.